agora com o Moses, um dos talentos internacionais que está presente aqui no IM Rio Major. Moses, what are you thinking about the, this whole event and the, all the three weeks you've been here? It's been exhausting. I think my first thought is having a crowd for this long, having the Brazilian crowd at the Challenger stage, the Legend stage, and obviously now at the playoffs is is an exhausting trial. It's been a long time with all the drums and the noises and everything, and uh, having to cast over it as well. So yeah, I'm just I'm tired, but it's a happy tired. So uh, although it's been an amazing event, there has been some problems, or at least on on, uh, on social media, people have been talking because the the, the final arena is kind of empty uh, when Fury is not playing, and some say it's due to the fan fest outside. What do you think of all this problem? And, and do you think that uh, the um, the notion that people that people have outside is the real one? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know entirely what the problem. I mean, I could say yeah, I'd, I'd love to have a full arena, and we always want to have a full arena, and it's it's a bummer that it's not filled out. Um, I don't know if it's the fan fest that's causing most of it. I don't really know what the issue is, and I haven't really kind of bothered looking into it. I've been mostly focused just on the Counter Strike. Uh, I can say I think the fan fest is one of those things that this is the first time it's kind of been done at an event like this. There's going to be some some learning episodes to take away from it, to say the least. Um, but I mean, we've had a wonderful crowd from Brazil, especially for the Fury Games, as you mentioned. Um, I think the fan fest elements of that can be taken to be used to kind of make sure in, in the future and make sure that you know the arena is going to be if you move it in side and some elements of it inside uh, you can actually be able to help out kind of fill that crowd but yeah I don't know I think it's kind of a bummer and I know I've spoken to a lot of Brazilian fans who have been bummed out about it and they feel like it's not a great representation but um, look I've, I've loved being in Brazil here and the crowd's been a big part of that as well. Yeah, the crowd has been amazing. Now about the teams that are playing this major uh, this has been a major of surprises we can say that yeah. and uh, in your opinion although Iraq and outside are playing the grand final are they the biggest surprises uh, in this tournament in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to paint it, to be, to be fair to those. I mean, it's obviously great seeing those two guys, uh, those two teams in the grand final. Um, that certainly shocked me. Uh, I think on some level, I think the absence of so many of the top teams, like them getting knocked out so early is, is perhaps even in some ways a bigger one. Like FaZe going out 0-3 was obviously a huge shock. G2 and Astralis, no, well, G2 not getting here. I think Astralis, some people saw coming a little bit more. Um, Navi not making it deeper as well was a little bit of, a, was quite a shock. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the fun of Counter-Strike right now that we've seen building into this major is that the floor has been raised so much and if you're one of these top teams and you're not you're not coming in with your A game and there, there's something wrong like you can very easily fall prey to some of these younger teams that are playing really really well at the moment um, and the style of Counter-Strike that's being played at the moment kind of I think lends itself to some of the younger players being able to showcase a little bit more of their skills so um, it's a surprise, but I'm happy to watch. I mean, guys like Jam, guys like Hadian, they're super fun to watch. They have a lot of really cool stories and a lot of a great history in their careers. Um, and I mean, it's just it's, it's going to be cool to see them do battle regardless. Okay, awesome. So now, final question. I'd like to touch on your career because you've been a player, you've been a, you've been a, um, a caster, you've been a coach, now you're a caster again. So what can we expect from you from the future? Do you want to do something else that you've not done before? Uh, yeah, but I think I want it to be more like a little bit more behind behind the scenes. I kind of want to be involved a little bit more. You know, I've, I've lost that. I love commentary. I'm going to try and do it as long as I humanly can until I'm either physically not able to or and I'm just like physically not being hired for events. Um, but, you know, something that something involved, I want to be part of like building, building a project. I think that's what I'm missing right now. It used to be when we were when I was doing commentary, you know, I was there when E-League began on, on American television, which felt like you were the start of some really special project. Um, I was there when Dream Masters ran their first event and they started this whole new brand. Um, I've been there for the first event that was held in uh, in the Lanxess Arena at ESO One Cologne. You very much felt like you were part of like building this new project as well. Um, and I think nowadays with the way the scene has kind of settled itself and calmed down and we're returning to events um, you don't really feel like you're getting involved in some new adventure and some new like building of, of something that's going to be that's going to be special for the community so uh, I don't know what it's going to be yet uh, working on that as we speak but I want to I want to feel like I'm actually building something rather than just coming in and yeah. working a job and then taking off I want to be part of a part of a process okay awesome good luck on that and thank you for the interview thank you sir. thank you